Welcome back to our Resurrected Life devotional series where we're looking at and spending time intentionally with the resurrection of Jesus to see how, to see why, and to see the ways in which it transforms and changes our life. How it is truly the cornerstone of all the things that we need, all the things that we believe in this life. Today we're taking up the resurrected body of Jesus. That's right, the physical body of Jesus after the resurrection and how it changes and shows us what our future resurrected bodies will be like. I want to start with this question though. How often have you heard the question? How often have you even thought the very question, what will heaven be like someday? I think it's one that we like to think about, one that we like to ask even, and we wonder about. But the question I don't think we ask very often is what will our flesh and blood be like one day? What will our resurrected bodies look like? What will they be capable of doing? What will we finally be free from? What are the things that we're going to spend our time with? Today we're going to look at three separate scriptures and how they all sort of peel the door back for us, how they open the window, if you will, into the future to see how and why the resurrection of Jesus changes the way we should look at our bodies and especially gives us an insight into what they will be like one day. Now, let's start in Philippians chapter 2. Chapter 2. Chapter 3, actually. Chapter 3, verse 20. Paul writes, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we also eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to these words, who will transform these humble bodies of ours into the likeness of his glorious body by, by means of that power by which he is able to subject all things to himself. And so we have to start here because Paul says to us, look, your body is going to be like Jesus one day. That you're not going to stay forever in heaven in this place of waiting for the resurrection. That there's going to be a day when Jesus will return and when he will transform your humble, your lowly body to be like his by the power that only he has. So then the question we should ask as we read, as we hear these words from Paul, is then, okay, then what is Jesus' resurrection body like? And then what am I going to be like because I'm going to be like Jesus? So I want to take you to the Gospels. I want to take you to Luke, actually. So a similar account actually happens in John as well. But in Luke, this is after Jesus has been resurrected. It's after the road to Emmaus story has happened. He's already appeared to them in the breaking of the bread. But then this happens, starting in verse 36 of chapter 24 in Luke. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, thinking they saw a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones like you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they could not still believe it because of their joy and were amazed, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it, in front of them. There's a few things in this passage, but I want to direct our attention to at least two of them, right? One is that Jesus is real flesh and blood. That even though he's somehow appearing and disappearing and coming through walls and and not really bound by space or time, that he's not a spirit, that he's not, not physical, right? That Jesus has a real body. Just like in John, he invites Thomas to reach out and touch him. He does the same here. He says, look, I have real flesh and blood. I have real hands, real feet, real knees, real shoes, real toes. He's a physical body. But more than that, he shows his disciples just how physical he is by taking and eating a piece of fish. 
He eats it right in front of them, and they see it. They see it go in, and they see it not come out somewhere else. They don't see it drop on the floor like we see in the movies. Jesus is resurrected as a real person. And the same will be true for you and I, too. That in that day, we're not going to be resurrected as angels, as spirits, as untangible things. In the resurrection, we're going to be real flesh and blood people again. The same flesh and blood, but transformed. Transformed. The last place I want to go with you, the last place I want to take you, is to 1 Corinthians 15. We've already been here at the start of our series. This is where Paul says how important the resurrection is. But in this chapter, at the end of it, he talks about what our resurrected bodies are going to be like. And he looks back to Jesus, as we've already done, but then he takes it a step further and plays out the implications of what it means that Jesus was resurrected and that we will be resurrected too one day. So starting at verse 50, listen to what Paul says. Now this is what I am saying, brothers and sisters. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the blinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Now when this perishable puts on the imperishable, and this mortal puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will happen. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul says here, look, your resurrected body is going to be different. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same broken body that you had as you left this earth, as you waited, began waiting for the resurrection, as you were with Jesus in heaven. Paul says your resurrected body is going to be dramatically different. It's going to be transformed even. That your resurrected body is going to be imperishable. That it will put on immortality. That it will never die ever again. And so that means that all of these aches, all these pains, all those things that make people say, don't get old, it's not fun, or it's not for the weak of heart, all those things are going to be gone. Because your body will be perfect in the resurrection. That because of Jesus' resurrection, your body will be changed and transformed. No longer will the sting of death, no longer will the sinful effects that we must bear in this day and time be on us. They won't weigh us down anymore. And so as we think about these things, we see how Jesus' resurrected body, Paul promises us in Philippians, look, you're going to be like Jesus His resurrected body is the first fruits from the dead, and it's going to be exactly what you are going to be like too one day. And then we see Jesus with a physical body, really eating, even drinking with his disciples. And then we see Paul reminding us that these broken, these frail bodies will put on immortality. They will be imperishable. No longer will be weighed down with all the brokenness, all the frustrations, all the trials that we have because we dwell in these temporary bodies. And so my question for you today is in what ways does the hope of a glorified body change the way that you view yourself and your body today? And then second, in what ways does that future hope give to you hope and encouragement in the midst of the trials and heartaches and brokenness of the bodies that we have on this earth encourage you today? Let me pray with you as we end our time together today. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for your resurrection. Because in your resurrection, we are blessed. We are given so many things, Lord. 
as we've considered what our resurrected bodies will be like because of yours today, we give you most praise and thanks, Lord, that you will give to us imperishable, unfading, and no pain, Lord, that you will give to us bodies that will never die again, Lord, but will be real, tangible, physical things. So, Lord, in the midst of these days when we must experience trials, when our bodies give us pain and suffering, when they keep us up at night, Lord, give us the hope we need that one day all these things will be gone because of your resurrection victory. Give us the faith we need to trust. To give us the faith we need to believe in you this day and always. Jesus, we pray and ask this in your resurrected, powerful name. Amen. Make sure you like and subscribe the video below so that you don't miss another one of these videos. God be with you this week.